I know, but I'm, I might move forward. So how do I look from here? So yeah, uh, I definitely feel better now starting a podcast without a intro. So that's a good thing. Uh, I think that I'm very happy about the direction of the podcast. I feel like I'm getting a lot of reactions or engagement from the podcast. People are DMing me and texting me. And uh, I got a Instagram call today to talk about podcast seven, part one. Um, I don't know if Melissa is uh, was making a face. Um, so, because it's somebody that I, I used to talk to. So, Melissa's making a face about that. So I think that's funny. Talk to what? I mean, talk to is fine. It's all the same thing. I mean, it's the same. It's not really the same thing. Okay. But we okay. used to, okay. you know. Have intercourse. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, so, I think that that was interesting for the podcast. For the, it's just like, a, it's starting off to be a good day. Um, and nothing happened on the podcast so far. We have a new setup today. I moved my my couch all the way into the corner. You know, I'm trying to see what works best for the podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm going to post some of the DMs I got, the texts I got, just different things. There was one guy that actually texted me a while ago about the second podcast, I believe it was. And I was talking about um, the coronavirus. That was when we interviewed Crystalina and you know check her out writers with attitude is the instagram um and i think that what was i saying oh right so during that during that podcast i got a dm it was very very long i was gonna post it and i went to go post it and then the the words weren't there anymore like there was no messages left and i'm like i've never seen this before i'm like what's going on so I'm thinking I'm bugging. I'm like, that maybe it's the wrong Instagram. I have a lot of Instagram accounts for all the different project pages. So I'm like, okay, where could the page, where could the DMs possibly be? So I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Because I felt like that was a really, we had a good conversation. It was very long. He had a lot of thoughts about the podcast. Um, very, um, I want to say well thought out thoughts. Um, but I just think it was cool that he had that. So I go to check it. And then they're gone. So I, I DM the person like, hey, the message that you sent me, they're gone. You know what happened to them? And he responded by saying that it was maybe an overload on Instagram. And that's why the messages are gone. Now, this is something that I don't like because I learned to look it up. And I don't, I've never heard of that before, never seen it before. But I didn't know this until that day that you were, una- that you were able to unsend messages on Instagram. So I think that's kind of corny that somebody would do that. I don't know if they did that because I said I was gonna post the pictures of the inter- of their stuff online. Um, anything that I post is not gonna have the person's name or their face in it unless they want me to put it in there. So I'm gonna block out anybody's name or anything else that I post because they may may not want their face or Instagram or Twitter or whatever to be seen. Um, so I just think that was kind of corny. I do have the messages because I, I want to respond because it was so long for the messages that he wrote. Um, I had to like copy and paste them all into my notes to then respond to each paragraph that he sent me. So I have that. I'm going to still post that, but I don't have the, he has, after I responded to that, he responded to my response and I was going to respond to his response of my response, but it was gone. So I just think that's really corny and I don't really know why he would do that. That's just, that's just so weird to me. So I just, you know, I think that's really odd. And then tell me that it was, uh, Instagram overloaded or something like that. Like, I've never heard that before. So I think that was kind of corny. Um, ooh. So like I said, I'm going to post a lot of the stuff I've been getting on a Bamboo Project page. That's the Bamboo Project underscore podcast on Instagram. I'm going to post a lot of DMs I've gotten, messages, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to actually, I want to actually post a video that I had this morning on Instagram. What is it called? Instagram chat? Instagram live chat thing? <laughs> I don't think Melissa is very fond of my... Oh, you mean the one I recorded? Yeah, 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 that one. What happened? Oh, 
Oh, I don't know if you're talking about that. I am. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to post. I want to post that. Uh, I'll block out the person's name. Well, they can't see their name. I'll change the way their voice sounds when I post it so the person, nobody knows who they are. Um, but yeah, I just think that was interesting. And it's kind of funny because I guess I'm, I don't use Instagram phone calls or phone video chat. I don't know what it was even called. I don't use that. I've just started using it last month. I've used it three times. Uh, and this is the third time I've used it. So the person was saying that they were responding. They, rep they replied to one of my stories on Instagram of the clip that I posted of the last podcast. And they were pretty much saying that they don't they don't think everybody agrees with what I was saying on the podcast. I'm like, all right. So we call and they were saying that I was able to go back and watch it while I'm on the call with them, but I had no idea I could do that. So I'm like, wait, I can actually leave the video chat, still be on here with you and go check it out. I was like, well, I just felt mad old in that moment. I really had no idea I could do that. So, um, so yeah, I just wanna touch on a couple other things from a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the old podcasts I had said that one of the people that I worked with on the campaign, I can say the name now, I did a campaign for uh, Coca-Cola, right? Um, that was two, three weeks ago. So they're supposed to, there's actually a montage that they did put out on a Coca-Cola page that I'm in. It's like a second clip of me, it's like maybe even half a second of, it's like a picture of my face and I'm on my bike riding. They did a whole documentary style video on it. I don't know if they're gonna actually have the whole video up or not they have that so i'll put a link of that in the description and then they said that if they get chosen for it then they'll actually be able to use the whole month the whole documentary style video that they shot of me that day that took you know eight or ten hours to shoot maybe even more now nah, about eight to ten hours to shoot so i'm hoping that they use that coca-cola because that would be really fire and then also um they said that if they don't use it, then I'll be able to still see it, and it may not go on the main Coca-Cola page, but it will be used. It will be used somewhere. So I think that's really good to know. So when that comes out, when I find out about it, I'll let you guys know. I'll put it up in the description. I'll probably post it on the podcast page or my own page. So you know, stay tuned for that. My page at Donovan Gray, D O N I V A N G R A Y. Uh, is my water over here? I'm kind of thirsty. Freezer, Jesus. Thank you. Ooh, see a little table right here. Thank you. Um, so on that shoot, I remember I talked about one of the people that I dealt with, and she was gonna buy me. Mm. Kind of parts when you talk for two hours, or you just be talking, it makes your mouth dry. Got to drink my water. Fiji water. Gotta sponsor me. Um, so I was talking about how this lady, right? So I, I say she's racist, but it's not the kind of racism that people assume is racism. She probably doesn't even know it's racism. I think white people and other people who aren't black hear the word racism and they, they don't, it instantly triggers them because they don't, they don't know what it is. They don't know how to describe it. They just know, oh my God, I'm not a racist. I, I have, I talked to a black person before. I ordered from Starbucks and they have black people there. Like I'm not racist, I'm telling you, I swear, right? And they go, oh my God, you're using the R word. That's how they feel, right? Um, so she was one of the racist people that I feel acts out of fear, right? And she actually said she was gonna buy me a gift for my birthday and she did, right? And to me, I think she bought me the perfect gift for my birthday. Right, because it was something that if Melissa had got me, I would have been upset. I wasn't gonna buy it for myself because I think it's a waste of money. And I wouldn't tell anybody else to buy it for me because I feel like y'all, it's not something that I need. It's something that I would like to have, but it's not a necessity for me. So she actually bought me a pair of AirPods. So my AirPods that I had, I had, I used to, I used to have obviously two AirPods. One of them fell out while I was riding my bike. Now this is my problem with Apple, right? For anybody that has AirPods, and I feel like Apple should fix this. This is a serious issue that I have with them. And I mean, honestly, I think Apple's going down the drain. But they have so much money, the drain is very, 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 very long. It's a very long drain. So they t it's going to take a while for them to get down there. But I don't feel like Apple still has that it factor to it anymore. It's kind of just like, it's whatever. You just get the phone because you had the phone, and it is what it is. I haven't upgraded my phone in like three plus years. I have the iPhone 8 
Plus, I think. Um, so it's, and it's like the features that they have for the new iPhone, they don't do anything really. It's just reinforcing issues that not issue. They're just they they're not giving us new features. They're just catch up, catching up to everybody else that already has these features. So and you know, and the camera's not even the best camera. I don't honestly. The only reason why people have iPhones is because other people have iPhones. That's really the only reason why people have. It's kind of like Facebook, which is interesting. Only people. The only reason people are on Facebook is because everybody's on Facebook. So that's an interesting dynamic for a business to be in. So I guess it's kind of good for them, but I still think overall they're not innovating enough where I feel like it's a phone I have to have or got to upgrade. So same thing with the products. The AirPod, right? I'm riding my bike. The AirPod falls out of my pocket, right? And not only does it fall out of my pocket, well, I fall out of my pocket, right? I'm like, ah, shit. You know, I'm riding my bike. I'm like, damn. So I get off my bike, get my AirPod. I ride, take, take my next order. I'm like, I bet. So I go, because it was charging, because I wasn't using it, because you can't, you know, they have a headphone jack. You can't charge your phone and use Apple AirPods at the same time, which is ridiculous. So, what? You said AirPods. What? You meant headphones. Oh, facts. Yeah, you can't use your headphones. Yeah, you can't use headphones and charge your phone at the same time, basically. Um, so when my AirPods die, I just put them in my pocket and wait for them to charge until I, you know, whatever, go up to my next order. So I'm riding around the city, like, all right, taking all these orders. I'm like, my phone, should, my AirPods should be charged by now. It's about 20 minutes to charge, 15 to 20 minutes. I go to check my AirPod and I only have one AirPod in there. Now my brain doesn't understand how that's possible, right? I'm like, how is there only one AirPod? Where could it possibly be? So I freaking... Think about where the AirPod could be at, right? And I go back to the street that it was on to only find out that the AirPod was run over by a car, right? So now I have one AirPod. And I'm like, bruh, I literally, like, I picked up the AirPod case. I, I got it, I bet. I didn't think to even check that the AirPod would have jumped out the case and ran across the street and I guess hit up against wherever it went. And as long as I know, all I know is not inside the case anymore. And I'm like, bruh, that doesn't even make any sense. How does it hit the ground and fall so far away? Now, that was, I don't know, that was a couple of months ago, right? Melissa, same situation. She's in Whole Foods. Her AirPods drop. She sees AirPod drop, the, Air, the AirPod case. AirPod actually jumps out of the case, f uh, flies across the floor, goes underneath one of the shelves or, what would you call it? Is it a shelf? Yeah, it's a shelf. The shelf in Whole Foods and gets stuck under there. She can't get it back. Now, the other day, so after she had, this lady bought me some new AirPods, which I said, I, the best gift I can get, because I wasn't going to buy it myself. Um, but anyways, after that, that's why I had one AirPod. So I'm riding around for months with only one AirPod in my ear, because I'm like, it's not a necessity to get another AirPod. The only problem, and the one that I did have was actually washing the washing machine. But I'm riding around, like, all right, I'm cool, whatever. So during that day, during the photo shoot, or during the video documentary, she's like, oh, you know, we're having a conversation. I brought up about my AirPod situation, about me only having one. So she went out and got me AirPods. And like I said, I'm so grateful for that. Like, that is so crazy because, like I said, it's an amazing gift. Um, and that's, that's how she ended up buying me uh, a pair of Apple AirPods. And I had to go to, to, to B&H to pick them up. So I'll drink some more water. You know what's funny? I felt it. Yeah. That's why I drank. Like running into your water. Yeah, that's why I drank the water because I felt it. I'm like, you know, let me just take some sip of water and just. And you kept saying that the AirPods fell. When we say the AirPods fall, it, I visualize the pods falling. I got to slow. That's why I drank some water. You see that? I was like, you know what? Some going kind of fast here. Let me slow it down. Um. So where was I? So she bought me the AirPods. With the case, right? Right. Went to B and H to pick it up. So I'm like, oh, I bet. I appreciate that. It's an amazing gift. Um, but so she did. I, I don't know if I, I said this earlier. In one of the old podcasts, I had said I don't know if she's gonna actually buy me the gift that she said she's gonna get me because she is so afraid and she would say I would I believe that she would say things just to say things to ease the moment instead of actually being authentic in what she's saying she's just saying whatever would make the situation be better she would say so i'm like all right you're you gonna buy me airpods all right thank you i appreciate it whatever or buy me a gift okay whatever i'm not really pressed about it but she ended up doing it so shout out to her for that um 
So yeah. Yeah, so this my, so basically this is my problem with AirPods, right? Is that this keep happening? So yesterday, my brand new AirPods that I have, same thing, f falls out of my pocket, hits the ground, and I'm in the street and I have to get off my bike and tell traffic to stop. I'm out in the street like traffic, like telling everybody, yo, please don't go any further. There's a SUV coming up the street and I, I I'm watching the tire on course to hit my to roll right over my AirPods and I'm like, bro, I just got these like. Do not roll over. I'm like waving my hands. I'm doing all types of craziness so he don't run over my AirPods. Thank God that he stopped. So I'm like, all right, bet. I go get my case. I'm like, yo, thank you. I'm on the phone with Melissa. I'm like, yo, I would have been so annoyed if I would have went home and I would have had broken, a broken AirPod case. So as I'm getting on my bike to ride off, across the street, I see this white dot on the floor. And I'm like, bro, are you kidding me? My AirPod came out the case again and went across the street. And I'm just like, yo, this don't even make no sense. Like, if I had, if I didn't look back, I would have rolled off again. Same scenario, AirPod case, no AirPod, come back, broken AirPod. So I don't know Apple. Apple to me is trash at this point. I have it because I have it. If something comes along that's that's, I'm just waiting for the thing to come along that's better than Apple. Like that's really getting it. Like I'm using a Pixel right now. The Pixel uh, Four camera is very much better than the Apple camera. So I. We use this for the videos. I use it for pictures. It's completely better than Apple camera. Um, so, and it's, they only have four generations of phones, I think, or however many pixels they have out. Uh, so, that's that. And one thing I really want to touch on, because I want to do this last week, it's like a little game about racism, right? This is that I, 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 I kind of laugh when I use that word because I know that white people hear that word and go, ah. Here we go again. A black person talking about racism. Oh my God, it's racist. Oh, everything is racist, right? So, first things first. I said this two podcasts ago, right? Or three podcasts ago. That I don't believe that racism exists the same way that we think it does, used to, or the way that people think that it does exist, right? Are there people out there who don't like you because you're black? Sure. Or whatever race you are. Sure, whatever color you are. Okay, fine. What I... What I really believe, though, it comes from two things. It comes from being ignorant, right, uneducated, put it all in the same category, stupid, dumb, all in that same category, or afraid. I think that the majority of the racism that we deal with now is just people being afraid, whether they're afraid of what they see on TV, whether they're afraid of a story they heard from somebody else, whether they're afraid because they know that they don't treat black people the right way, so they're always afraid that they might get caught for treating somebody the wrong way. I think it falls into a lot of that, right? And my problem with people is that they keep asking racist people to change, right? I'm like, I, I asking somebody else to change is not going to fix the problem, right? I think that people who are black and not people of color, not the blacks with an S, not African Americans, black people, right? That's what I'm talking about. That means the people who are here in America, who are born here, who are black, not Africans, black people. It's a very big difference between all these different things, a very large difference. Um, so if we don't want to experience racism anymore, right, we need to get into, position, get into positions of power where us being, we have the ability to change somebody's life based off of our subconscious feelings such as I don't think that what that person should be doing I don't think that person is doing is okay now here's an example of that right so a white person might be might say hmm let me think of an example a white person would say that's racist but that's not nice um okay he's a good he's a good understand I'm gonna, I'm gonna use hair for an example right so a white person might come into work who owns CBS and see a black person with their natural hair out and go, the the policy at the job at the office says you have to be in dress code, you have to have your hair be maintained, right? Now they don't understand that just because somebody's hair is in a curly afro or they, or they did a twist out, or they have some type of um, non straight hair. The hair is maintained, it is well taken care of, and it's actually very healthy. They don't know what that looks like because they don't hang out with people who have hair like that. So, 
they may feel like, okay, I'm going to use the rules because I don't understand what you're doing. And I'm subconsciously um, racist. I'm subconsciously racist in that way. So they're going to use the rules to actually go and enforce it on somebody that's living naturally or who's living just as a, as they are, right? Now, the problem is that black people need to be in its positions, of po- positions of power so that we aren't affected the same way by these these uneducated people, right? So if you're in the office and you are the, the head of the office, you own the company, then if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I feel like Betty was being racist to me, right? You're, like, you're more likely to fire Betty because you know what racism looks like from a Betty to a black person. We can call them a black person. A lot of black names we can use. We can go to a black person, right? So, in, in reverse, that happens all the time. People who are white come into the office and say, I feel like they use these special words. Harassment. I was afraid and scared for my life. I was in fear and there was danger. These all these things, right? And when you use these trigger words to somebody who is from the same elk as you, then you understand what they're talking about. If a black person came up to you and said, yo, I just came down the street and I saw John, he's bugging. A black person knows what that means. A white person has no idea what that means, right? Or even not even, not even a white person. Anybody that doesn't understand the culture will not understand what those nuances mean. And that has a a bigger effect in the workplace because now you can get fired. Now, if I get on the bus and I feel like the bus driver is being racist to me, right? And he's a white and he's a white bus driver, and I call supervisor. The supervisor is black. The supervisor will be like, "What did they say to you? He he called you boy." Oh, no. Okay, he get fired. Now, if I told a white person that, they'd be like, what do you mean he called you boy? He was probably joking. Why do you think everything is racist? It's not always racism. It's okay. But that's because we don't have the position of power to do that. Now, if a black person called a black person and got them fired, that white person who got fired would understand that the, there's certain kinds of languages you cannot use when talking to somebody else. If you don't understand the dialect, the nuance in conversation, there are certain things you can and cannot say. But because we don't have the power to enforce these nuances, we kind of get the short end of the stick by always having to go, you know what, we're going to suck it up and be like, well... I mean, you know, he called me this or they said that and looked at me like this. It is what it is. I'm gonna leave it alone. So this is why I'm always saying that people stop trying to tell them you should treat me better. Be nicer to me. Don't do that to me. Oh, my God. Woe is me. Somebody help me out. Um, Stop doing that. Decide what you want to do and then go do that thing. And then when you get to that point, then you make decisions based off of that. Now that you are a manager, now that you are a owner, now that you have money to hire people, whatever the case might be, now you're in a position of power. Don't get to that position and then go, well, I'm going to be nice to everybody. Remember, the people that are below you are still feeling the same thing that you felt when you were in that position that they were in. So you now, since you're the boss, you have to enforce the same rule so that now other races understand, like, you cannot talk to us like this. And you, it will not happen. And what will, what will, what will come from that will be more black people working at your, at your workforce and other races and cultures will understand that certain things are unacceptable to say or do. So I feel like that's one of the solutions as opposed to everybody feeling like, oh, boom, we're going to go and beg somebody else to, to fix this. And the president is racist and my manager is racist. And if all these different things, it's like you have the power to move and leave and go somewhere else. Everybody hates when people say that, like, oh, I don't want to leave. They should be. No, if you don't want to be somewhere, then you move and go somewhere else. If you don't like how you're being treated, start your own company or work for somebody that you actually want to work for. Yeah, this, yeah, that's shit. I had to turn my head like completely over to look at the to look at the thing. This is not gonna work at all. Well, at least we, now we know this this setup is not gonna work going forward in the podcast. This is the last time I do this one. Um, yeah, I guess it's better, but it's not really t- tilted towards me a little bit because it's clear. Yeah, so I, I have a couple of things that I wanted to kind of touch on in regards to how I feel about race and kind of how it works now how we can kind of solve that problem. I touched on some of those things earlier. Um, an example of, and this is for people who, who are not from the culture that I'm from, or don't understand the culture that I'm in. And you actually either, you feel, you don't know if you're a racist. You don't know why somebody called you a racist. You genuinely are like confused. This is for you guys, right? So this is how it works, right? A person that is racist or that everybody would deem as racist is somebody that 
has preconceived notions and then does not try to combat those preconceived notions. They just allow them to exist in their mind and they make decisions based off of those notions, even if somebody has presented them with new evidence um, to you know contradict what they already thought. So an example of that would be using the word copy, right? So people my age, people who are in my age group and my culture will understand what that means. If I text somebody, yo, I'm on my way and they say copy, we know what that means, right? Now, if I was talking to somebody else not from this and I text them copy, right, they wouldn't understand what I was talking about, right? Now, the non-racist thing to do in all situations and in this one is to just ask, what does that mean? Like, I don't understand. Why did you say copy? I don't get it. And then when they give you an answer, you go, oh, okay, I understand it now. That allows you, if you feel comfortable enough, to use those words going forward, right? If you've talked to somebody who uses those words then and you understand the context to it, then you can use those words. I think a lot of times people do is they will see something on TV or hear it in passing and or even on social media and they'll use those words or they'll do a dance or they'll see they'll do something that they saw or heard and then be confused as to why somebody thinks what they're doing is racist right it's because you are not actually putting in the work to understand the culture you're just seeing something as you thought it was and you're just acting as what you think it is which is already in the perspective or perspective perspective of what your life is at that point so an example of that would be they i had listened to a uh, the interview yesterday with his name is russell peters he's a comedian from canada right and he's indian and he would do different he does a lot of race-based jokes right and what happens with that is i get some backlash from it or whatever sometimes it's normally from people who are not of those cultures it'll be somebody who will say oh no i can't believe you talk you call that person a retard or you call that person a you know you may you may find their voice you use that stereotype right now this is where racism kind of this is this is pretty much how that works if you're in the culture you understand the nuance of the culture so if i say a joke a certain way then or if i say something like um think of something i would say if i was um Hmm. Okay. I can't, I don't, because I'm black, I don't have to think about what's a black thing. You don't need black things, Melissa? Like what? I guess a black stereotype that I might have. Oh, I got one. Okay. Okay, wait, which one do you have? Uh, first time I came to my mind, it was, I don't know, watermelon fried chicken. Uh, uh yeah. So... She said watermelon fried chicken, which is hilarious because I don't even, I don't, I personally am not, I wasn't a fan of watermelon, like really, um, I, I might eat it now, but I don't really like it, but that's just to say that to assume that everybody likes watermelon as black is racist, right? But to ask somebody, why is there a stereotype about people liking watermelon and chicken? Where did that come from? Do y'all, like, do you guys really eat that? That's not racist. That's a legitimate question. Somebody will then answer you. I mean, I like it. I don't know if everybody else does, but to just go into a conversation with that notion and then not try to contradict what you already think, that's what people will perceive as racism, right? That's the ignorance. That's the ignorance part of it by not trying to get educated about something that you do not know. Now, the other side, like I said, is fear. So I have a little game that I want to play uh, for the people who are actually watching the video. People who are not watching the video, um, I'm probably going to just cut it i'm probably gonna cut it so that you only hear what comes after this part you don't actually hear the video part but if you're watching the video you'll be able to see what i have right here planned so there's a little game that i have this is what melissa messed up last week that i was gonna do but melissa wanted didn't want me to be great so she said oh well i'm gonna just sabotage sabotage the podcast yeah that's precisely what happened i know i was there so here we go put on my I'm gonna put on my screen record and hope that my computer does not explode
Okay. So here we go. Three, two, one. All right. So I'm going to explain the fear side of racism to people. Uh, honestly, this is not only for race. This is for anybody else that deals with anxiety or fear, which is why I wanted Melissa to see this. Um, actually, I think we have to come over here and look at it. Want to come and look? Melissa uh, Aneto. Yeah, come back here probably. I'll give you clothes on. I mean, you're dirty. Should I put it up here? Okay. So, this is how I think that fear works and racism, right? So, Melissa knows who this person is. Oh, I do. Oh, I didn't know it was the same for you. It is. Kinda... Well, we're here now. We're already here now, right? But this is the whole purpose of how this works, right? So, if this person walking down the street, right, mm -hmm. at night, it has to find you it looks like Italy, like when we was on that strip, right? Somebody might be like, oh my God, I'm scared of this person. Yes, like, that right. looks very scary to me. Yes. I don't know what's going on. Now, why would this person scare you, Melissa? Because they have, like, a weapon in their hand. Okay. They have a weapon in their hand. Uh, what kind of weapon does that look like to you? Well, it looks like a hockey stick. Okay. So this person walking down the street with a hockey stick in the middle of the night, and they're coming at you, right? You would be afraid, Yeah. right? Now, everybody's looking at the screen, all right? I am going to, let me see. Here we go. Are you still scared by this person? If you saw them on the street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mad dark. Was okay, mad dark. okay. Some nice shoes, though. Nice shoes, right? So you like, okay, he's not as... You don't know. He could still be a murderer because you yeah, don't know what he yeah, is, yeah. right? So now, if I showed you... Damn, you put a lot of work into this. I did, right? I go this. Oh, man. It's a golf That's club. not what I thought it was. I feel like... I feel like uh -huh. this was edited in a certain way. Golf clubs look like that? Mm-hmm. I thought they looked like the little, little small things. They're different size golf clubs. Mm. I forgot this one is called. I don't know if it's a putter or not. Okay. It's like man walking down the street. This is what you see. You see he has a That's golf club. That's still a club. weapon though. That's still a weapon. Right? He got a golf club and he got these shoes on. He's still a scary person. What street is this? Mmm. It's a good question to ask. He's a very good, that's a very good question <laughs> you ask. Good question. This is Jamaica Avenue. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> actually. Is it near the other uh, Actually, you're like... in a foreign country that you've never been to before. Damn, so I don't even know what kind of street it is. Nope. You just you just see the person you're in a foreign country, you've never been to before, your first time there. Mm -hmm. I'm this is what you see. Afraid. Automatically okay. afraid. Yes. And you see this person with a golf club and this. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now why are you why are you carrying around a golf club? You ain't got the you don't got the the, the 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 bag, the thing to put it in, you just walk around with the golf club. That looks very highly suspicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now are you still scared? For this person? If you just walking down if you're in you're in a foreign country, this is what you see walking down the street. You're like, damn, do I cross the street? Do I stay on the street? What should I do? I mean, I'm a I'm a probably stay on the street. Mm-hmm. Why is that? They have a golf club and shoes. You beginning you say you're crossing the street. Why are you crossing the street in the beginning? I didn't think I said that. Okay. In the beginning I think I said I would still be afraid. I didn't say I would cross the street. Are you are you afraid now still? Uh I'm I'm I might be a bit less apprehensive. I might be looking at him kinda like a, um like a you know, still kinda just I'll make note of the golf club. Like that's weird. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't feel as inclined to like run for my life. And why is that? Because you know, we got some nice pants, some nice shoes on. And it's like a golf club is not um entirely unexplainable for that outfit. Okay. Because you can, you know, might have some money or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess that makes you. Now he's a black man. Is that more scary now? Are you scared? Nah. You're not scared? There's a black man walking down the street with a golf club and shoes <laughs> and, and, pants and pants. And pants. People could be scared by this. This, is a very, this could be a very scary thing to a lot of people. It, it doesn't make me more afraid mm -hmm. um, than if, what you gonna call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the hands is white. Do you make me more afraid? Is they white hands? They be wilding. They do be wilding. They be wilding. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, what's it like, Dango? So, now we have... 
Ooh, that's a nice jacket. It's a nice jacket, right? It is. Is, you, is this person look like a person that you might run from on the street? You're like, ooh, I don't know. This guy's kind of scary looking. Nah, 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 nah. You nah. feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel know, a little more might, comfortable. Might, might make some eye contact right? when I walk. You're like, okay. Know. Like, who like, yeah, like, who is this guy, right? He got a nice jacket on, got the shoes, got the golf clubs. He might have. Now, now you see the golf club. What do you think now with this that you see so far? What do you see? Like he might he might be coming from somewhere, but like I said, it's still a bit suspicious, but mm-hmm. not as much. Mm-hmm. Not as mm-hmm. much. I might. I I think I probably would even notice the golf club at that point. It's like, oh, that's a nice suit. Okay. Okay. So now you have. He got the white shirt with the blue tie. He got the nice shoes on. He got the the golf club and the pants. Right. You're like, ooh, ooh. I, I wouldn't be as I wouldn't be as I wouldn't be as anxious. Okay. I'd, be, I'd have you know, I'd be calm walking past. Okay, so some people may have figured out who this is. Some people may have not figured out who this <laughs> is, right? So I'm I'm gonna reveal who this person is to everybody, right? Now here we go. This is Barack Obama, the former president, number 44, 45, I think 44. I think it's 44. Right now, if he's walking down the street, how do you feel? Hello. Right? Do you feel any danger? No. Nothing. Would you? Would you? If you saw him on the street, would you cross? Would you think anything? Would you? He has a golf I'm club. What would you think? Running straight into him. What would you think? You saw. You saw a golf club. What do you think? You saw that right I now. I fucking care about the golf club. I don't care about the golf club. Now, why is that? Because of Barack Obama. Okay. Now, this is exactly how fear and anxiety works, and I think that even though Melissa knew who this person was already, I think that there's still a point to be made here. Right. The point is that, and she also asked, "Where is she at?" When people feel fear and when people feel anxiety, they only see certain pictures of what they're looking at. They don't try to identify all the different points of the fear. So they'll look at it and they'll see a black figure. They go, oh, my God, is a person walking on the street is a black figure. I don't know what to do. I'm going to cross the street. I'm going to be afraid. Right. This is how they this is how they react. Right. And where is the other one? This is, what, this is what they see, and this is how they react to it, right? Now, this goes along with a lot of other things, not just people on the street who are afraid to be killed or murdered or kidnapped or anything like that. Right? Okay. So, the reason I'm bringing this up is because during the video shoot for Coca-Cola, um, my bike was leaned up against the pole while I was in the car eating lunch, and a black guy came up to my bike, he was, he looked kind of shabby, right? Kind of, he wasn't dressed like he was Barack Obama. Uh, he also, you know, he had a backpack on. Took his backpack off, put it on the floor, and then he took his laptop out, put laptop, I think, on the bike, took his cord out of his bag, and the lady and the, video, and the cinematographer went up to him and told him that they thought he was stealing my bike, right? Now, this same premise that I just did here with this game is very similar to um how would I save this? Okay, it's very similar to what they experience, right? Mm-hmm. So as you saw in the beginning of this, it's very scary if you're walking down a street and you don't know what you're looking at, right? The point the way that you defeat your fear or get over your anxiety or anything of that sort is you have to figure out as many, um, I'm going to call them points of education, right? So, you see this person, right? You go, hmm, it looked kind of scary. Let's let's use the person with the bike situation, for example, right? When they, try to, when they were going to steal my bike. What, what, black, what, what racist people will see is a black person near a bike, right? And automatically their brain goes to, that person might steal. Or they're next to me on the train, I'm going to move my purse because they might steal. That is, that's all I got to see that they're black. I'm going to move the thing over, right? Now, that's for racists across the board. It's kind of how that works. But this same premise applies to a lot of other people. Um, sticking to the bike situation, for me, I wasn't nervous about stealing my bike because I had multiple points of education to be able to determine that there's no threat here. So when he comes up to my bike, I'm looking at him. I'm like, okay, there's a guy. Is a male, right, next to my bike. Males are more likely to steal a bike than a female. That's usually how it looks or how it goes. Right? I've never really heard of female stealing bikes. It's not really a thing. I go, okay, 
my bike has a lock on it point of education so for him to have to steal my bike he has to carry my bike off the street or he has to cut my lock off right my bike weighs 100 pounds is he gonna be able to pick up my bike and walk off easily without me noticing very unlikely right these are multiple points of education it's a three points of education the more that you can get the the safer you'll feel the better that you'll be able to react to, situ to situations right now he took his laptop out his laptop out of his bag right so okay He's not going to steal my bike with a laptop, right? There's no way of doing that. You know, he's not going to hit it. So, okay, boom. That that decreases the threat level of this person, okay? He goes in his bag and takes out a wire for the laptop, a USB charger. Another point of education. He's not, it's very unlikely he's going to steal my bike, right? Now, he kneels down next to the bike. Now, this could be something to make you think he's going to steal if you did not already notice that my bike is locked it's a heavy bike i'm standing next to there's multiple people outside it's the middle of the afternoon he has a laptop and he has a charger cord for his laptop right these are not the tools of somebody that would steal a bike right and the problem is that the people that i was with the cinematographer and i guess the producer or director i'm not sure what her name would be they just saw a person that was not dressed like wasn't dressed i don't even know what to call it what, how he was dressed he had he said he had oversized clothes on they would just saw him next to my bike and they automatically thought he must be stealing right and that's like i said i think that one of the people in that situation was uneducated that's a cinematographer he didn't actually look at the points of education and i think that the lady was too afraid to look for those points because in my mind i view fear and anxiety as static it's like it's just a lot of this going on you can't really process anything it's a lot of fuzziness you it's just it's like a lot of static like when you have a tv that's old you turn it on it's a lot of black and white noise that's how i view anxiety and, and uh fear right i feel like with him he just wasn't trying to see that there was no threat but both of these people would be called racist, which is what the guy did. He called them racist. Was it justified? Absolutely, it was justified because he was not doing anything that would have let that would allude to him stealing a bike. Other than kneeling down next to the bike, there was no threat that he had. He didn't touch the. He didn't jiggle the lock. He didn't try and touch the buttons on the bike. He didn't try to move the bike. Anything like that. But he was already labeled as somebody who is a thief right and then from that labeling people come and they react to the label that they gave him or assigned him based off of the premises that they already had built up in their head from the lack of education they had about what they saw him doing right so with the, with melissa in the situation now that was with the racist thing with that right now this method can be applied to everything that you do